Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Inner Work for Greater Good. My name is Emily Eldridge, and um, I just realized that I am not plugged in. I, <laughs> my microphone is not plugged in. So hold on one second while I do this. I apologize. As you can tell, I'm a little bit um, uh, disorganized today, a little bit rushed. Uh, it's been kind of crazy. Okay, so I hope you can hear me better now. Emily Aldrich. Hello. This is Inner Work for Greater Good. It's not normally this crazy, uh, but in any case, here we are and here you are. And thank you for being here as always. Um, so today's topic is um, that I want to talk about. Obviously, I'm talking about inner work for greater good. And we talk a lot about the inner workings, but we also talk a lot about like things that happen in our lives and how they can guide us towards realizations and everything. And so anyway, my point is that my uh, topic today has to do with what when your client teaches you. And what I mean by that is those of us who do um, or who guide others through inner work, whether you know, you're a therapist or a coach, or I call myself an emotional health innovator and educator, because um, I'm not technically a coach. And I feel like I do more than coach and that I'm not a therapist. I don't have any of those letters after my name. Um, but the point is those of us who uh, support people through their journeys, who um, are uh, you know, in any way helping people process their emotions or navigate difficult uh, situations in their lives. Those of us who are helping others through those things in inner work, oftentimes um, our clients can come to us with interesting situations. And um, sometimes when they come to us, we can have certain reactions or certain realizations of our own. And so in this case, I wanna talk about this, this, how oftentimes people come to us because we have some kind of wisdom or they see us as having some kind of wisdom or some ability to help them get through things or some kind of expertise. But you know, what happens when actually they teach us and we learn from them? And in fact, I find that some of the best healers and coaches and therapists, et cetera, um, and guides and leaders are those who learn from the people that they're guiding or leading or coaching or, you know, helping to heal that we have a lot, it can be a real two way street. And the reason why this came up for me as a topic this uh, week is because I had a client uh, with whom I had a realization. And it was so interesting to watch how this client was mirroring certain things that I was experiencing. Now, it's very, very common for me, at least, that I might have a client who, you know, comes to me with a particular situation and I can, and, and through my own past experiences, but even through my, 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 my empathetic power, you know, my empathy um, that I can identify with what they're talking about, even if I haven't been through exactly the same experience, or maybe I've been through exactly the same experience and I can go, yep, I get it. There's still that ability to, uh, you know, uh, recognize oneself in one's client from that perspective. And yet oftentimes it's sort of like they're coming to you with an issue that, you know, maybe you've already gone through, you've already processed, uh, you know, whether it's something like, you know, issues, you know, being triggered by parents or like imposter syndrome or, you know, some of these different challenges that we can have. And, you know, those of us who've already done a lot of our inner work often are helping people who are still, well, we're always doing inner work, but are earlier on in the process. And so the point is we can feel pretty well equipped to help that person. And we see ourselves reflected in them um, and their challenges reflected, you know, in, in our experiences. But in this case, I had a client who came to me with some really intense fears. And this is a situation that she and I have talked about many times before. And we've been doing the drawing out process and going through the change light system and healing those parts so that she can really feel much deeper clarity and wholeness around this situation. But it was so fascinating, though, how... In this last session I had with her, a lot of really deep emotions came up. Usually we kind of sit with, um, you know, sort of, we go into the deeper stuff, the, the underlying triggers and wounds and all that, and we heal those, you know, from childhood, et cetera. Um, but in this case, she, it was actually a follow-up session. So it wasn't a full drawing out process session, which are usually about three hours. It was a one hour session that was a follow-up. 
And she was expressing some really intense fears about a situation in her life, or you could even argue like a lack of a certain situation in her life, something that she felt was really missing. And that um, she, I take that back. No, I'm sorry. It was, just, it's, a, it's sort of a general theme in her life, but she'd had a situation in which she'd made a choice to disconnect from someone. And it was based on all of these deep, intense fears. And and it was so interesting because as I'm sitting there and I'm listening to her talk about her fears in the situation and what led her to basically end it with that person, it was so fascinating because I saw how I was feeling in the moment in my own situation in my life totally mirrored in what she was going through. And here's, here's the thing, as she was talking about her fears in the situation, and yet she was at the same time talking about the actual situation, like what had actually happened or what had not happened. And, you know, I was like, I thought to myself, gosh, her fears are really intense. And I don't see where these are coming from. And also it, they didn't, this is going to sound judgmental, but it's not meant to be. It's like they didn't seem justified. In other words, the current situation she was dealing with was not commensurate with the intensity of fears that she was having. In other words, nothing had happened in that current situation to really trigger the intensity of the, of the fears that she was having. So obviously those fears were from the past um, that were getting triggered, but I felt and it's not very often that I feel this way, but I felt like she was overreacting based on what was presented to her. And by the way, I apologize. I'm sounding very ambiguous because obviously I can't reveal confidential information. But the point is, as I'm listening to her and I'm thinking, God, this situation doesn't sound like it's as horrible as she's scared that it is or will become. Or, or it sounds like she cut it off before, you know, just because there were sort of glimmers of something, but it didn't really sound, it sounds like her fears had preempted her from enabling things to kind of play out naturally. And I'm not saying I disagree with her choice, but the point is that I saw reflected in her, she was a mirror for what I was going through at the time in a different situation in my life in which I was having these intense fears that had been triggered and not because of any sort of evident major problem. If anything, there was a lack of information on my part, but it was fascinating to watch and think, wow, she kind of seems like she's overact overreacting a bit because she's really, really scared. And then I went, oh, that's kind of like what I'm going through right now in my situation where I am like way scared and way freaked out and really trying to figure out what the hell's going on with me. But it wasn't necessarily based on any like alarming information or evidence that I'd received. It was more my own fears because I, because I, I was afraid afraid that a situation would repeat itself. I'm sorry, I apologize for being so vague, but again, I'm having to like protect, you know, confidentiality and, and not, not get too in the weeds about this. But it, my point of that is to say that listening to her talk about her, the intensity of her fears and how it really sounded like she was kind of overreacting because she was scared made me realize, oh, wait a minute. I think I'm overreacting because I'm scared. And that was really, really huge for me in helping me to calm down in my own personal situation that I was in and relax more around it so that I could handle it with greater clarity and ease and wisdom. And so my point is, as, as, as I wanna talk about today or I'm talking about today, is it's about when your client mirrors for you or when your own client teaches you. And I really do believe as much as 
those of us who are in these positions of, I don't even think of it as authority, but we're seen as positions of authority or as guides for helping people through their issues because we've already worked through our own or we have some kind of expertise, is that it, it's very humbling, but it's also very necessary to have to be able to learn from our own clients and notice when maybe the universe is bringing us a, a situation that our clients are experiencing to help us recognize something within our own lives or whatever we're experiencing. Now, in this case, as I was listening to her, I wasn't triggered at all by her situation. I was more just like curious, you know, open and curious, but also like reflective. And I went, oh, I would say this, I wasn't judgmental, but it was more like, I don't know, that seems a little strange. You know, and obviously I know that it's probably, you know, that it's from deeper stuff within her, but even just in that mood, she's like, it's a little strange. And then I thought, oh, okay, okay. I think I know what's going on here. She's mirroring back something that I need to recognize within myself. So it didn't trigger me and actually just helped me see clearly. But the reason why I'm using the word trigger is because that I would say is frequently another indication or a major indication when our client is teaching us something about ourselves or showing us something about ourselves. So for example, if a client is dealing with a situation in which you suddenly have a reaction, or we as coaches, therapists, et cetera, suddenly have a reaction to what they're going through, whether it's it's, um, you know, criticism, like in, you may not show it, but if you feel like critical or irritated or, or reactive in some kind of way, it's really important to be aware of where that reaction is coming from. Now, sometimes that reaction, you know, sort of like, like, for example, I found that when I'm suffering, it hasn't happened in a while, but when I'm suffering from compassion fatigue, oftentimes I will start to feel like irritated with other people's emotional stuff. I, or I'll feel exhausted by it, or I'll feel drained by it. That's a sign of something like, I would say compassion fatigue. I'm not an expert in this. So I'm sure others can talk more expertly about this, but compassion fatigue. So in other words, that if that's what's getting triggered, sometimes it can be because it's like, you know, you actually really need to take care of yourself. So that can be a good mirror or reflection for oneself to realize that, okay, need to like stop here or, you know, I need, I need to stop and really take care of me. But if someone's in a situation in their lives and you're triggered by it in sort of a judgmental or reactive way, or like, um, what the hell are you doing? Or, uh, basically just notice just the whole point is to notice when you have an emotional reaction to something that your client has done or is doing or is going through because what that can actually be showing you and those of us who are in these positions, these roles in people's lives, is there some unprocessed stuff there for us within ourselves to look at? And the reason why that's important, of course, is because obviously our job is to be present with the client. And if we're bringing our own crap into it or our own reactions, then we're not being fully present with them. So that's where inner work, of course, is absolutely vital. I know that for myself, one of my biggest, biggest like foci or goals or like what I really work on is being as healthy as I possibly can within myself and my own life so that I can be as healthy as possible in the lives of my clients and those I teach and support and educate and heal and help to heal. And so if you are noticing yourself having a reaction, write it down in the moment, I would recommend, or later on, and look at that. What is going on with me that I'm having this reaction to what that person just shared with me? So it could be, let's say, let's say your client comes to you and they're crying and they're extremely sad. And now, mind you, I'm sure we've all had clients where it's like that's it's just constant crying and constant sadness, and it doesn't feel like things change. And that's where that can be really frustrating, obviously, as someone who's trying to facilitate and guide people through their healing process. So I get that. 
But also if you have this impulse, if some part of you has an impulse to like want to say stop crying or like, oh my God, get over it or have some kind of reaction like that of suppressing their emotions, for example, that's I think a pretty good indication that you may actually have a part of you that's suppressing your own feelings or that's not allowing you to acknowledge your feelings or dismissing your own feelings or your own sadness or your own tears. So that's an important sign that, that basically there's some kind of inner work that your client, because of the experience they're bringing to you and the reaction that you're having, that's an indication that you gotta do some work yourself. Because I guarantee you bringing your own triggers and your own wounds and your own egoic stuff, whatever it is, into this scenario, this, this what is supposed to be a safe and healing space for your client, you're basically, and I'm not, there's no criticism in this or attack in this, it's just, you're basically making an unsafe for them. If you're not doing the inner work that you need to do to heal those parts within you that are getting reactive, that have gotten triggered, by whatever they're bringing to you. You know, it's interesting because like with the drawing out process and um, there's some of you might be familiar with it, some of you might not, but it is a very intense process that I do when I work with my clients. And like I said, you know, sessions can last two to three hours and we go really, really deep. We go to the core of people's wounds, of their defense mechanisms. So I end up working with and talking to some pretty intense, you know, bullies and monsters inside of the person or blocks or triggers or, you know, crying children or what have you. And if I hadn't done my own inner work enough of it, then I could easily get triggered by that. I could be judgmental. I could be critical. I could be irritated. I could be dismissive or what have you towards those the, the parts within those people or towards the people with their challenges. But because I've done so much inner work, it's extremely rare that I get triggered. And I'm not saying that as like, oh, yay me. I'm saying it takes a lot of inner work to really be that clear, present and safe space and vessel, if you will, for your clients, to support your clients through their journeys. And not only that, the more we do our own inner work, the more powerful we become in their lives, the faster we can help them actually heal and process their wounds. So my point, then my point of bringing about the drawing out process, we go really deep, but I gotta be honest with you, like that's actually one of the big reasons why I haven't yet created, I, I've got training programs for the drawing out process, but the training in the drawing out process requires that the person has, you know, it will require, I haven't officially launched it yet, but it will require that the people who are learning learn the drawing out process are really doing the work themselves. Because the last thing you want is to be talking to someone's inner critic and like arguing with it or siding with it, like in a real way, like, yeah, you're right. That's, she's an idiot or whatever. <laughs> so, or even with, or when you're dealing with a wounded inner child and that child is carrying some really intense sadness or pain from a situation that may to an adult seem like silly or minor, but it's so important to that child, that inner child. And so it's so vital that we never dismiss the pain of that inner child because it's real for them. Do you see what I'm saying? And so that's why it is so extremely important, whether you're doing the drawing out process, whether you end up getting trained in it once I finally launched a program or you're doing your own work. It's so extremely important that we do our own inner work. I always say that the, the absolute prerequisites, sorry, I keep scratching my nose, the absolute requirement, prerequisite and requirement for healing is safety external and internal. And a lot of what I see myself doing with clients is I create that safe space for them so that they know they're not being judged and they know that I'm present with them and that I am kind and compassionate and non-judgmental and uh, patient, etc. But also what I'm ultimately doing, and I believe this is those of us who are healers, a lot of what we're doing is helping guide those parts that have felt unsafe 
back to a sense of safety. And so that's why it's important that we as coaches, therapists, healers, whatever we are, you or me or anyone else, educators, that we create that safe space. But first we have to create it within ourselves. And that's all you know, to the point of this whole episode in which our clients, when they come to us with certain things or people in our lives, obviously, but in this case, I think it's important to recognize when our clients can be our teachers, that we make note of that and that we look at it. We take the time to look at what's going on with me that I'm having this reaction or hmm, how could it be that their situation and what they're dealing with could actually be teaching me in mine. And I find that the more we can allow there for that, there's a little bit of that two way there, right? With the client with, you know, with under uh, two way, not that you sort of turn around and go, oh yeah, I'm dealing with the same thing. And oh, I'm having the same trouble. No, no, I, it's not necessarily appropriate to do that, but to internally have that two way and go, oh, you know what? I think I have something to hear or receive from this, that that can empower us to be more powerful healers, coaches, and therapists than ever. And to be even safer spaces for those who we seek to serve and those we are serving. All right, I hope this has been helpful. The show is a little bit shorter than usual. I hope that's okay, but I feel like I've shared all the information there is to share. Uh, as always, find me, find us at changelight.world, just so you know, I am in the process of creating programs for children, uh, inmates, and coaches and therapists. I'm working on that too, because I want to help coaches and therapists and others learn the drawing out process or learn the change light system and to work with the people they help to process through their issues, learn the three types of struggles and three types of inner strengths. So be on the lookout for that. And by the way, if you go to the website, go to changelight.world and click on our programs and you'll see at the bottom, you can actually sign up to receive updates about those courses and when they are coming out. All right. I hope this has been helpful as always. Again, my name is Emily Eldridge with Changelight and I will talk to you again next week.